Hey everybody, so uh, today we're here, we're going to talk about stand high post connections again, but a little bit different. I know we've done this before. This is actually a, a pressure reducing valve close connection, uh, which we said we were going to do a video on. So, um, you know, and it's, there's, there's some important distingui the distinguishing characteristics of, of these valves and uh, inspection testing and maintenance requirements for them. Um, as always, I'm here with uh, Drew. Uh, say hey to everybody, Drew. Hello. All right, and this was his idea. Um, you know, it's one. This is one of it's one of my bigger gripes uh, because I, I've seen uh, PRVs and standpipes uh, misdesigned, misapplied, mistested numerous times in, in numerous different hospitals. Uh, so, where you're normally going to find pressure reducing valves is actually in high rise um, applications, um, and and we'll kind of talk through that. We're going to talk through the the when they're required, where they're required, uh, the testing and maintenance requirements for them as well. So, um, like I said, this is a two and a half inch uh, pressure reducing valve. There's other, there's other kinds as well. There's add-on kinds that you can add on uh, that, that, that kind of like stick off of this and they'll reduce pressure. Um, there's an inch, inch and a half uh, pressure reducing valves if you still have closed cabinets. There's master pressure reducing valves that you can put in the fire pumps or um, on your on four inch mains and things like that to, to segregate. But um, why are pressure reducing valves required? That's, let's start there. So uh, pressure reducing valves are required for sprinkler systems and for standpipe systems to have a maximum threshold of pressure um, for the system. For standpipe connections, for a two and a half inch standpipe connection, that pressure is 175 psi. For a inch and a half, it's 100 psi. Um, and the reason for this is actually, it goes back to the fire department uh, and how they use these, um, these hose connections. Uh, and if, if you've ever sat down or if you've ever tried to use a, a two and a half inch hose with full flow water coming out of it at 175 PSI, it is, it is incredibly difficult to control. Um, I know that I, my first time I ever tried it, it lifted me off the ground. Um, and there's, there's special tactics and stuff that, that firefighters use often almost always they're going to use a two-man team to control the hose and, and guide it as well. But that's the reason why. We don't want to exceed these pressure requirements because the more pressure, the more difficult it is for it to manage. So, uh, like I said, you're going to find these on lower levels primarily of high-rise buildings, but as you go up in elevation, uh, then at some point you should stop having a pressure-reducing valve and just have a standard uh, two-and-a-half-inch hose connection. Um, and the reason for that uh, is because as your, as your elevation increases, your pressure decreases. So, and that's, that's very important, important to understand. Um, and that actually leads us to, you know, why, where, like where the pressure requirements come from. We hydraulically calculate standpipe and sprinkler systems based on the most remote connections or based on the most remote area. Um, and, and normally for high rise buildings, you know, that is gonna be on the roof. Uh, that's not always the case, but that's, a, that's a, a good way, you know, to think about it is the fire pumps down in the basement, the most remote is the roof. Right, so uh, code actually says, uh, and this is, there's a big distinction here from 1993 uh, edition of NFPA 14, which is the standpipe code. In 1993, we made a shift from the maximum, uh, the the, uh, the rooftop pressure, the most remote outlet pressure of a, of a two and a half inch hose connection, to be um, from 65 psi to 100 psi, uh, and that was a big big shift. Uh, so now new, new standpipe systems have to have 100 PSI the most remote outlet. Um, and that, with that change, there also came a big change of the drain associated with it. So newer systems now have to have a three inch drain uh, for, to handle the capacity of a full flow test of this. And we'll get to that test here shortly. Um, but as you can tell, this is an older building. It was built before 1993, uh, and we don't have a, um, a drain capable of handling it. Um, so that's important to understand, right? So luckily for us, this we're down on the ground floor, um, and the, we're right outside. Uh, so you don't have to, you know, we don't have to run a hose for this full flow test, but we're, we'll talk about that. So annual test requirements are still the same. Um, it's a, a little tweak. But you still have to make sure that there's no obstructions. You still have to make sure there's, you know, you're good, no leaks, no broken handle. Um, and instead of doing a full valve exercise, because I can't do a full valve exercise on this, uh, as you can see, because I've got my pressure reducing apparatus on here to, to stop the valve stem at some point, um, you have to do a partial flow test. 
Um, and, and all we're doing here is just checking to make sure that the valve opens and it reseats. Uh, that's it. That's really all we're looking for. Make sure there's no obstructions, things like that. Um, and like I said, so um, you can actually tell which ones are pressure reducing valves. There's two different, well, there's a couple of different kinds. There's manufacturer preset, uh, which comes straight from manufacturer at a set, set PSI pressure. Those are uh, unable to be field, field modified and there's field modified. This is a field modified valve. Uh, you can see because I can take this valve stem off and I can readjust the pressure as needed. Um, and all pressure reducing valves have, it'll say pressure reducing valve or PRV on them. And this one's actually on the back side back here where our asset tag is. Um, and so that's, that's important to understand. You don't have to do a uh, full flow test out of a standard fire hose valve, just out of pressure reducing valves. So that leads us to this, the requirements for the, that make this different. Uh, than a standard hose connection. Um, every five years, you have to do a full flow for all pressure reducing valves in your building. Um, and what that means is that I have to have some way of getting the water outside. I can't do a full flow here in the stairwell. You gotta get the water outside. And there's always going to be a, uh, a pressure reducing test, test apparatus, which is essentially um, a, a tube with gauges on, two gauges on it and between it a flow meter. Um, it's, but what we're doing is what, that's going to be able to, to tell us what the flow and pressure and requirements are. And then from there, it's actually going to have a hose that goes outside um, and for here because we don't have a drain or that hose will connect to your drain um, and you can do that full flow. So it's, it's critical to understand when you're going through and you're, you're developing this program, where are you going to flow water? If you're up on the eighth floor like us, right, that's where ours, our last one is, am I going to run hose all the way downstairs? Can I take out a window? Can I, where, where's that water gonna go? It's a lot of water, guys. So you gotta think about that kind of stuff on how you're gonna do a full flow test. Um, and what are we looking for? Well, what we're looking for is to make sure that the valve meets the requirements um, of the hydraulically calculated system. So for this one, for example, we do have a hydraulically calculated uh, tag on this, right? It tells me what the system GPM and discharge and the pressure has to be, right? Not all hospitals are that lucky. Um, and this, I'm telling you this is lucky because it, it's just, you, it's, you don't see it everywhere. Um, hopefully you have plans, hopefully you have something, right? If not, then you may have to do some, get an uh, engineer involved to do some hydraulic calcs to tell you uh, what it should be, um, what the system should be hydraulically calculated at. But that's really what we're looking for. If you can't, if you have a manufacturer preset valve and it fails, um, then you have, you, have to, you have to replace it, really. Uh, if you have a field adjustable one, then your, your ITM technician should be able to, or the repair company that will be fixing it should be able to, to field modify it and fix it. So, but that's really, um, I think in a nutshell, everything about, Drew, what am I missing? Uh, I think you covered just about everything. I think so. If I didn't, you know, you guys comment down below, tell me, tell me what I'm missing, tell me how you're doing this. Um, I like to hear about uh, other hospital systems or other high-rise buildings. How are you, how are you testing? your PRV host connection. So until our next video, we'll do a, we'll do a video at some point on, on main pressure reducing valves and, and things like that for sprinkler systems as well. So that way everybody can look and see those. But um, until next time, happy learning.